Hadha kalamun, we only said two words. This, a pen, but you will translate, this is a pen. But in Arabic, what will you say? Hadha kalamun. You will say, Hadha kitabun. Huh? There is no is, or m, or r in Arabic. So you have to keep that in mind. Huh? And what are they called in, is, r, m are called in, in English grammar, copula verbs. Huh? Yes. So in Arabic, there is no linking word. There is no linking word. We, it is understood to be. We understand it. But it's not there. Okay, brothers and sisters? Okay. So, the first picture says, Haza Baitun. What is the next one, brother? Haza Masjidun. Okay. And the next word? Haza Babun. Okay. What is the next word? Haza Kitabun. You will have to say bun properly. Huh? Remember. Dun dan din. You must say properly. Okay. Hada kita bun. Hada kala mun. Mun. Hada mifta hun. Hada makta bun. Hada sari run. Hada kursi yun. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? Correct? Easy? This is easy, you know it. But now you've got to memorize the vocabs huh? and practice, practice at home. Okay, inshallah. Uh, can, you, can one of you read loudly, brother? Read it, brother Muhammad, loudly. With Haza. bun, huh? dun dan din, okay? okay. Uh. Haza baitun. Haza baitun. Haza masjidun. Haza masjidun. Haza babun. Haza babun. Haza kitabun. Haza kitabun. Haza kalamun. Haza kalamun. Haza miftahun. Haza miftahun. Hada maktabun. Hada sarirun. Hada kursiyun. Hada kursiyun. Okay. Now we come to the next page. Huh? What is written there? Ma hada. Huh? Ma is used for asking question. Huh? It, is, it means what? Huh? There is a name in it. Huh? Uh, but we won't uh, go in detail right now. Later on, we will go in detail and learn all the names there, that are for, uh, for the nouns and the particles for asking questions later on, inshallah. Okay. So when you ask a question, you say, Ma haza. What is the meaning? Again, is, is this not there? Ma means what? Haza means this. <coughs> what this? No, but it is what is this? Because the kapula verbs are not in Arabic. Okay, linking verbs are not there. Mahaza. What is the answer? Haza baitun. This is a house. What is this? This is a house. Okay, brother. Now I come something here. Haza baitun. This is a statement. This is a house. How do I change that into a question? Huh? By just putting Hamza. What will you say now? Ahaza Baitun. But then you will have to put a question mark. And you have to even change your tone. Ahaza Baitun. Ahaza Baitun. No, you are asking a question. So you, your tone has changed. Hada huh? baitun. This is a house. Huh? Let me write down properly. Huh? This is a house. Okay, brother and sister, this is a house. How about here? Is this a house? Is this a house? Huh? So this, putting Hamza in front of a statement, rather, change it into a question. Are you with me? No other changes. Just by putting Hamza in front of a sentence, you change into a, a question. Huh? Are you with me, brother? 
Okay. Okay. And what is the answer? Naam. Huh? What is the answer? Naam. Okay. Or if it is negation, you will say la. Okay, brother, what is naam and la? What are they? Are they nouns? Are they verbs? What are they? Huh? Write down in you know, the little uh, note, you know, brother and sisters. What are they, brother? They are called No, brother. These are the things you are writing. I, 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 I do not expect you to know everything tomorrow. Huh? But this little note that you are writing will help you later on. Inshallah, someday you will stand up and teach. Eh? So, you remember, everything in Arabic can be divided into three groups. And what are they? Nouns, verbs, and particles. Everything in Arabic language, you can put it into three groups. Okay. What is hadha? It's a noun. What is bait? It's a noun. Oh, then what is noun? It's a harf. Harfu jawab. Uh, particular of particular of answering uh, and what is la harfu uh, okay brother uh, you know you use a uh, here this is, this is also particle okay but ma is ism now I am only telling you if you want to write it down you write it down I do not expect you to know it by tomorrow I, I don't expect you brother but slowly, slowly, this thing will really make a lot of sense to you. When we do later on in book three, detailed analysis of everything, then these things will come back to you. Right now, if you want, I'm just throwing at you. If you can understand and retain in your mind, alhamdulillah. If you forget, you don't worry. Don't blame yourself. Because we'll be repeating it, inshallah. Okay, brother. Ahada baitun? Naam. Yes. Hada baitun. Mahada, what is this? Hada kami sun. Remember, we got to pronounce it. Kami sun. Okay, brother? Ahada sarirun? La. Hada kursiyun. Are you with me, brother and sisters? Hada Kursiyun. Okay. Again, what is la? It's a particle. Harfu java. Particle of answering. Okay. Ahada miftahun. La. Hada kalamun. Hada kalamun. Okay. Ma hada. Hada najmun. The pictures are there, so it's easy, but I hope you will put a little time and memorize the vocabs. Inshallah, it will help you. Huh? Every effort, inshallah, will make you better and better. Brother, let me tell you one more thing. This is what I believe, and I always mention in the class, and I'll mention it now, brothers and sisters. Some of you are coming from far, from Pickering, from Brampton. And uh, maybe it's still further, I don't know, okay? From Oakville, maybe. But every minute that you are spending to come to learn Arabic, the time that you are driving, uh, the time that you spend at home to revise your lessons, to do your homework, the time that you sit in the class, inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will treat it as your ibadat. You know why? Because we are learning the language of the Quran for the love of Quran. No other reason. No dunya here. Only akhirah. We are learning Arabic for the love of Allah. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? 
So every minute that you'll spend in the class, in your car, at home, doing your homework, inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in his infinite mercy, will treat it as if you are doing his ibadat. Because we are doing for his love and for the love of his book, inshallah. Okay. Now, brother, ma is what? And man is who? Are you with me? Now, there is another difference, brother. Uh, in the whole universe, you know, there are two types of akal, having intelligence, or they are ghair akal, with no intelligence. Are you with me? Human beings have intelligence. But things have no intelligence. Pen doesn't have intelligence. Okay? Kitab doesn't have intelligence. We have intelligence. Huh? So anything which is akil, have having intelligence, when you want to find out about that, you will use man. When you want to find out about things, you will use ma. Now, the scholars define that the akal, you know, group consists of three creations. One is the human being, other is malaika, and the third one is jinn. You like it or not, they also have intelligence. Jinns have intelligence. Okay? So, when you refer to human beings, malaika, and jinns, you use man. For the rest of the things, it is ma. Are you with me, brothers? So, you can say ma haza. Are you with me? You can say ma haza, haza kalam. But if I point to brother uh, Muhammad and say, I cannot say ma haza, I will say man haza. What will I say? Man haza, and my answer will be haza Muhammadum. Are you with me? I am not pointing out to female now because of a reason that I'll explain you in next class. And from next class onwards, I'll be pointing out to sisters also. Uh, if I point out to this brother, I will say man haza. Then the answer will be haza Hasan. Hasanun. Uh, Hasanun. And then if I point out to the third gentleman, again I will say man haza, I will say haza abdus samad. Are you with me brothers and sisters? So for human beings, anything akal or rational, uh, rational nouns, we use man. For gair akal or irrational nouns, we use ma. Simple brother. So let's see now. To the, look at the picture and what is the question? Man haza. Haza tabibun. What is the meaning of tabibun? Doctor. Doctor. Got the idea? Haza tabibun. Man haza haza waladun. Got the idea, brothers and sisters? Then next one, man haza, he has got his uh, little uh, uh, bag, school bag with him. Man haza haza talibun. Talibun, mashallah. Now the question. How you start your question? By putting a. A haza waladun. Is this a boy? La. Haza rajulun. So all these new, new vocabs are coming. And you got to memorize it. Eh? Rajulun, a man. Brothers and sisters, next one. Ma haza. Haza masjidun. Man haza. So it's question for and pointing out to an akhil person. Okay. Man haza haza tajirun. What is the meaning of tajirun? Merchant. Huh? Very good. Merchant. Businessman. Businessman. Then haza kalbun. Dog. Huh? Okay. A haza kalbun. La. Haza Kittun, mashallah. Huh? So, brother, tun, kittun, a cat. Hada himarun. Hada himarun. Okay, brother. 
أهذا حمار لا هذا حسان all these vocabs you must do it at home huh? donkey horse okay ما هذا هذا جمل هذا جمل got the idea brothers and sisters now next page brother ما هذا هذا ديكون rooster هذا ديكون now again the question is man هذا towards a human being pointing out to human being man هذا هذا مدرسون مو مدرسون هذا مدرسون remember sun huh هذا قميصون لا هذا منديلون what is the meaning of منديلون handkerchief handkerchief so we have to remember all these vocabs remember that now ikra waktu read and write okay brothers and sisters Since I have the mic, I will be reading. But please read with me and read loudly. Huh? Remember, I have given you permission to scream and shout in the class now. Okay. Mahaza, haza kalamu. Okay. You can repeat mahaza also, inshallah. Okay. Number two, haza. Now, brothers and sisters, I found this very difficult. And if you find it difficult, uh, I, I think it's okay. It, it, it's it's normal, you know, because the vowel signs are not given, you know. So we got to remember the vowel signs. Hmm? If we say "haza kalabun," that will be wrong. "Haza kalbun," because there's a sukun on lam. So what will you do, brother, at home when you will write? You'll make sure that your vowel signs are. properly put are you with me brothers and sisters huh? if you will make an effort allah will make it easy for us if you won't make an effort brother it won't work okay so kalbun huh? any time you have a problem whether it is a sukun or a, a proper vowel sign you go back to the first lesson that's why i always say you know you have barely Uh, we are barely in the first lesson, and Doctor Abdurrahim thinks you know all the vowel signs. But for us, it's kind of a difficult. Uh, yes, brother Abdurrahim. For the body parts, would you say man? You know, say ma, right? Ma. ma. You will say man. Ma. Ma. Okay, brother. Haza kalbun. Huh? Not kalabun, but kalbun. Next one, brother. Loudly, everybody. Man, man haza. Haza tabibun. Haza tabibun. Very good. What is the next one, brothers and sisters? Haza jamalun. Now this is not jamalun, but jamalun. See, the vowel signs are very important. Huh? Okay. Next one, brother. Question. Haza kalbun. La. Haza kitun. Okay. Very good. Next one. Ahaza dikun naam, ah naam. Yes. Next one, brother. Ahaza hisanun. Is this a horse? La. Ahaza himarun. This is a donkey. Okay. Next one, brother. Ahaza mindilun. This is a handkerchief. Are you with me, brother and sisters? Easy. This is all halwa puri, brother. Okay. Next one. Ahaza, waladun, ha? Naam. Man haza, haza, rajulun, haza rajulun. Ma sha Allah. Okay, brother. Lesson number two. Do you feel like taking a break? Do you feel like taking a break? We can take a break if you wish. Uh, no, we are going to be st- till twelve thirty, brother. Huh? This class. Brother and sister, today was our first day. There will be more people coming because so many people have said they are coming. Inshallah, they'll come. It happens that you know, for some reason, they cannot come on the first day, but second day they will come. Inshallah. Brother and sister, our class timing is 9:30 to 12:30, and we'll take 
about 15 to 20 minutes break. And inshallah, we'll make arrangements for tea and, you know, so that you can refresh yourself. Sir, uh, and uh, Fatima pointed out to me something uh, on page number 10, brothers and sisters. At the end of the page, the question is, Vama Haza. Do you see that, brothers and sisters? Vama Haza. What is the meaning of Va? And. And. Va huh? uh? means and. Huh? Okay, you know that Arabic language, you can put it into three groups. So, what is Va? Is it a noun? Is it a verb? What is it? What I didn't say was particle. So it's a particle. Are you with me? It is ataf. We call it harfu ataf. So remember, but you do not have to memorize now. I'm only pointing out to you. Later on, I will be repeating it over and over, and inshallah, you will you will get into your uh, you know memory. So wa means and. In English, we call it conjunction, and in Arabic, we call it ataf. Huh? Ataf. Okay. Well, as I said, you can write it down, but you don't have to really memorize it. Huh? Wow is... Wow is... Ataf. Okay, Ataf. Huh? In English, we call it conjunction. We say harfu Ataf. Huh? Ma is a ism. Man is also ism. Man is also ism. Huh? Slowly, slowly, we will get into it. Uh, if, if I say something, and if you can write it, good enough. Uh, but don't, uh, you know, sit down to memorize it. It will come to us in the course of our class. Sister Naima? Ism? Huh? Ismun. Huh? Ismun. Huh? Which means noun. Huh? Okay. And uh, see, everything is there in the handout, Sister Naima. If it is damir, which is pronoun, then if it is adjective, it is not. And if it is adverb, it is zarf. But again, as I said, when we move slowly, slowly ahead, they will become, you will become very familiar with them, inshallah. So you got that done, and uh, now we come to Zalika. Brother, what is Haza? This. this. More than that, it's a pronoun. What kind of a pronoun? Demonstrative pronoun. And what do we call in Arabic? Ismu Ishara. Huh? Again, as I said, don't get uh, like... Uh, Stressed that I have to memorize it? No. I will be repeating it and saying to you, Ismu Shara. After a little while, you will know it is Ismu Shara. Okay. Now, what is the difference between this and that? Huh? This you use for pointing out things which are closer to you. And that you say for far things. Huh? So, both are pronouns, demonstrative pronouns. In, uh, in Arabic, we'll say, Haza ismu lishara lil karib, for something that is closer. Uh, and Zalika ismu ishara, ismu lishara lil baid. Uh, very simple, very simple. Okay, so, Haza kalamun, Haza bab, dalika babun. What did I say? Haza kalamun, zalika babun. So when I have to point out something which is far, you just use zalika. Ready, brother? The question, ma is same. Huh? Ma zalika. What is the meaning, brother? What is that? What is that now? We are talking about that. Zalika najmun. That is? That is a star. Haza masjidun. 
which is closer to us. Vazalika. What is the meaning of Vazalika? And that is a house. Haza Hisanun. This is a horse. Vazalika Himarun. Are you with me, brother? Vazalika Himarun. Now, we want to ask a question. So we are bringing Hamza in front. Azalika kalbun la. Zalika kitun. That is a cake. Cat, okay. Ma zalika. Zalika sarirun. Now we come to human being and we say, man hada wa man zalika. Who is this and who is that? What is the answer? Hada mudarrisun. Vazalika imamun. Imam, the one who leads us in the prayers. Okay, brother? Ma zalika? Zalika hajarun. Look at the vowel signs, brother, and try to, inshallah, understand and memorize it. Zalika hajarun. What is the meaning of hajarun? A big rock. Haza sukkarun. Look at the shadda on kaf. Haza sukkarun. Vazalika labanun. Now, brother, sukkarun. Okay? This is an Arabic word. In English, we say sugar, but it has been derived from Arabic. Sugar is derived from sukkarun. Sugar is derived from sukkarun. Are you with me, brothers? Now, Again, the same thing. Dr. Abdurrahim thinks you know all the vowel signs. No more vowel signs, but you will write down. Ikra waktub. Hada. Sister Salma, you will say sukkarun. Whenever there is a shadda, uh, give justice to shadda and pronounce it properly. Okay? So, now, now you see. If I write down to you, how will you pronounce? I did not put vowel sign. How do you know it is ki, ta, bun? Because it will come to in your mind. So when you see this, it will come to your mind that it is suk, ka, shadan, ka, run. Suk, ka, run. So every letter in Arabic, every word in Arabic, inshallah, slowly, slowly, your mind, you know, will retain it. And you will, inshallah, find it easy. Brothers and sisters, those who know Urdu, when you read Urdu, are there any vowel signs? Or ask somebody else who doesn't know Urdu to come and read Urdu paper. They'll get lost. But you don't get lost. Why? Because your mind can identify without the vowel signs. And inshallah, same thing will happen to us. But it will be a slow process and it will be easier if you put an effort into it. Uh, inshallah. So, brother, the first was Hada Sukkarun Vazalika Labanun. This is a sugar and that is a milk. Next one, brother. Man Zalika. Who is that? Zalika Imamun. See, now you are writing Mun automatically. Uh, Mun. Uh, it's not there, but you said Imamun, and we will say Mun, inshallah. Huh? Zalika Kittun La. Zalika Kalbun. Zalika Kalbun. Mahada. Hada Hajarun. There is a Fatah on Jim. Not Hajarun, but Hajarun. Okay, brother. Al Kalimatul Jadidatul. Okay, brothers and sisters. Imamun Hajarun Sukkarun Labanun. Do you see that dun 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 coming? Are you with me? Dun 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 coming. Can you see? Okay, brothers and sisters, because this is intensive course, 
And because we expect you to go home and sit down and do your homework. Huh? Okay? Okay. Inshallah, we will move at a speed. Huh? Because we want to finish this in seven months. Okay. Now we come to lesson number three. Little bit, we already did what is definite now and what is indefinite now. Yes, brother? New, new words. Huh? New words. Huh? Al-Kalimatu Jadida. New words. Huh? Okay. Now, brothers and sisters, I must remind you, you know, that this is intensive course. And just like taking a course in college or university, uh, that course finishes in six months and you got to, if you go to a college, take a course in computer or in other field, you got to go home and study and be up to date. Same thing applies here. If you will work hard, inshallah, every day, every single day, every single day, within seven months, you will reach a stage that will surprise you, inshallah. That will surprise you, inshallah. But hard work is the key to your success. And I always pray, Ya Allah, make it easy for me to teach. And Ya Allah, make it easy for the students to learn, inshallah. Allah will make it easy for us. Okay. So, what do you see? Baitun Adasu Thalithu. Lesson number three. Adasu Thalithu. Adasu Thalithu. Baitun. What is the meaning of Baitun? A house. Indefinite. Tanween. Huh? Make it definite. Al Baitu. Got the idea? Al Baitu. Fine, brother. Kitabun a book. Al Kitabu. Fine, brother. Kalamun a pen. Al Kalamu the pen. Jamalun a camel. Al Jamalu the camel. Now we come to Al Kalamu Maksurun. What is the meaning now? Tell me, translate, brothers and sisters. Al Kalamu Maksurun. Say it loudly. The pen. What did you say? The pen. Huh? You started the sentence with the pen. The pen is broken. You started with the. Huh? Okay. Now. Uh, we go to page number four in your handout. Keep your handouts open, brothers and sisters. We are all adults here. Inshallah, you will understand very well. Huh? What we are covering in one session, brothers and sisters, it will take two, three sessions in the weekly course. You know. Okay. What is sentence, brother? When you say a sentence, in, in Arabic we will say al-jumlatu, al-jumla. Huh? The sentence or a sentence, jumlatun. Okay, what is the meaning of sentence, brother? Huh? What is the meaning of it? Sentence is a group of words which make complete sense, brother. If it does not, a group of words which does not make complete sense, then it is not a sentence. Then we can call it a phrase. Uh, okay, we call it a phrase. Huh? So here we are concerned with sentence. Okay, now, brothers and sisters, in Arabic language, there are two kinds of sentences. How many kinds? Two kinds. Two kinds huh? One is called al jumlatul ismiyatu. And other is called al jumlatul fi'aliyatu. Fi'al. Huh? Remember, fi'al means verb. Huh? Fi'al. Fi'alun. Means verb. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? Fi'alun means verb. Okay. So, it's very simple. Al jumlatul ismiyatu. What do we call in English? Nominal sentence will 
begin with a noun. And al jumlatul fa'liyatu in English, verbal sentence, will begin with a verb. Okay, fine. Easy, very easy. As I promised you, it's all halwa puri, brother. Okay, but, but we will have to be prepared for some hard chickpeas also. Huh? Okay, brother. If it is a sentence, be it a nominal or verbal, be it a jumlatul ismiya or a jumlatul fi'liya, what are we looking into it? What are we looking into it, brother? You see, my approach is that I, I tell you all these things in the beginning so that slowly, slowly you are getting stronger. And at the same time, I tell you not to worry if you uh, forget or if you do not understand completely, don't worry. It will come to you. If you will come to the class, things will be repeated and you will learn more about it, inshallah. But let's talk about in English. A nominal sentence has two parts. Hmm? It's broken into two sections. Section number one, subject. What is section number two? <coughs> Predicate. Huh? Subject is a noun that we are talking about. And predicate is a statement about the no. noun. It gives a little more detail. What do we call subject in uh, Arabic? Huh? So you are going to learn that thing. But if you do not uh, retain today, don't worry. It will come to you slowly. Subject in Arabic is called Subject in Arabic is called Al-Mubtada. Huh? Al-Mubtada. Or you can simply say Mubtada. What will you say? Mubtada. Those who know Urdu, for them it's very easy. Because they use Mubtada. Just say Ibtada hoti hai. Things with which you begin something. Mubtada. Uh, what is the meaning of Mubtada? The thing which begins with. Okay? Something that is used to begin something. Mubtada. Okay? Subject. And what is uh, called uh, predicate in Arabic? Very simple. Khabar. Aaj ki taza khabar kya hai? Khabar. Al khabaru. Or you will say khabar. Are you with me? Khabar means news. What is the meaning of khabar? News. Huh? But as I said, brother, in English, we have subject and predicate. Are you with me? But in Arabic, we have mubtada and khabar. Are you with me, brother? Huh? Subject, predicate. Subject means mubtada. Predicate means khabar. Every sentence, if it is a jumla ismiya, are you with me? Every sentence, if it is a jumla ismiya, will have these two parts. There will be a subject and there will be a predicate. Now, in the beginning, we are dealing with simple sentences. As we go deeper and deeper, then we'll be learning a lot more. Things will get a little complicated. But brothers and sisters, I have experienced something. The more the complicated a thing becomes, more interesting it becomes. Uh, it's, it becomes very interesting. Because then, you know, Arabic is like mathematics and algebra, like a science. Everything is scientific in Arabic. Brother, it, Arabic is such a beautiful language. And it's easy to learn. Remember my word. It's easy to learn. And I will prove it to you. Huh? But you got to work hard. If you don't work hard, then you will find it very difficult. But if you work hard, it's very easy, very enjoyable, brother. Very enjoyable. Okay, so we are going to learn more about nominal sentence. Nominal sentence has 
two parts. Are you with me, brother? And one is subject and one is predicate. And in Arabic we'll say it has mubtada and it has got khabar. Fine, brother. I ask you something. Can you form a simple sentence in English, Sister Salma? Form any simple sentence. Hmm? What did you say? This is a pen. Huh? Huh? Now, I think you naya hai. What will you say? Al kalamu jadidun. What will you say? Al kalamu jadidun. Same thing here. Al kitabu jadidun. Or if it is an old book, what will you say? Al kitabu kadim. But remember, you always started with al. This is what I want to point out. If you make a Simple English sentence, you'll always begin with the. We have never thought about it. But now you can think about it. Huh? You will always say, the car is beautiful. The car is new. The house is big. Huh? The boy is intelligent. The girl, you always, the girl is beautiful. Huh? Okay. Uh, the, 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 the chair is new. The chair is broken. The house is broken. You will always start with... What did you start with? The. It means... You started with a definite noun. So it means subject is always... Definite. definite. It means muptada will be always... Definite. How are you with me? Muptada will be most of the time... It is definite. Uh, they'll, sometimes it will be indefinite, but most of the time it will be definite. Uh, and then, brother, what about the khabar? Khabar will be most of the time indefinite. Uh, the house is new. Uh, now, mind you, when you say new, it's an adjective. So you won't say a ah, in it, because it's an adjective. But if I say, Muhammadun, Muhammad is a doctor. So what will you say? Muhammadun, Tabibun. Huh? So Tabibun is a indefinite. Are you with me? If I say, Muhammad is a student. What will you say? Muhammadun, Talibun. Did you see Talibun? Muhammad is definite. But Talibun is indefinite. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? Now, more uh, example, brother. Haza baitun. Are you with me? Baitun, a house. Uh, but haza, okay, actually it is definite. We are not going to go in detail now, but later on we will explain you that even haza is a definite. Because when you point out to something, it is something particular. Uh, but we will go in detail later on. Uh. Pardon me if I sometimes go in some details, but don't worry. Whatever you can retain in your mind, you retain it. Now I come to the conclusion, brother. The muptada will be most of the time definite. And the khabar will be indefinite. Rule number one. Sister Salma, rule number two. Are you everybody listening? Brother and sisters? Muptada will always be marfu. Are you with me? Muptada will always be marfu. What is the meaning of that? It will end with a dhamma. See now we are coming, right away we are coming to what we were uh, trying to say in the beginning. That noun can be marfu, can be mansu. And can be majroor. Are you with me? Yes. Sister Naima? Noun declines. Are you with me sisters? Noun declines. It can be marfu. It can be mansu. Or it can be majroor. Now as I said we want to know why they are marfu and mansu and majroor. So if it is a muptada. It will always be marful. Kharas. Kharda idea, brother? 
If it is a mubtada, it will always be marfu. And if it is news, khabar, then also it will always be marfu. I repeat again. Huh? Nominal sentence has two parts. What are they, Sister Naima? Subject and predicate. Huh? I'm using English so that you don't get gabrified. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Use English also. But by the time you are in book two, you, you have everything in your mind, inshallah, inshallah. Then you will love to say Arabic terms, you know. So, uh, sisters, jumla ismiya, nominal sentence has two parts. One is subject and other is predicate. In Arabic, one is mubtada and other is khabar. Now I am telling you the subject is always marfu. Means it will end in a dhamma. And the predicate will always be marfu. Are you with me? Predicate will always be marfu. Sister Fatima, is it clear? Brothers and sisters, if you don't understand, ask me. I will repeat as many times as it is necessary to, to make it very clear to you. Huh? Sister Faiza, ask me if you don't understand anything. Huh? Okay. Brothers, same applies to you. I'm not doing a special favors. <laughs> Brothers and sisters are all equal to me. Yes, Sister Salma. I have a question. So, Khabar is not definite, but it is, it is your mother. Yes. Okay. Remember, when the noun is definite or indefinite, doesn't matter. But if it ends with a Dhamma, then it is Marfu. Huh? Then it is Marfu. Okay? okay. Are you, is it clear to you now? Now, in a simple sentence, she, I approach this way. In other classes, they, they just translate. And I, I feel if I start slowly, slowly now with you, these rules, let it take time. By the time you are in book two, you are very comfortable. You are enjoying everything because everything is making sense to you. If I don't do this, brother, and that, this is what happened to me when I did not understand. When we went to book two and when were, they were talking about all these things, brother, I was, I was really lost. It took me a lot of time to get to understand the rules. So I do it slowly, slowly from the beginning. One more time I'll repeat. A nominal sentence, Jumla Ismiya, has two parts. One is subject, the other is predicate. One is Muftada, and the other is Khabar. Every time we look into the nominal sentence, we look for We that. will look for that. And the Muftada, or the subject, Huh? is always marfu. And the khabar is always marfu. Huh? This is rule number, huh? very important grammar rule. But then when we go deeper and deeper, things will come in different colors. Are you with me? They'll come in different colors. But by that time your mind will be in a state, you will be able to understand it. Huh? Inshallah. Okay. Because right now we are dealing with simple, simple sentences in which it is very simple and easy to identify Muptada and Khabar. And you will see Muptada is Marfu and the Khabar.